So, Matt, eight goals, mm. two penalties, one red card. Was it interesting? Oh, you could say that, yeah. I was running out of paper at the end there. It was, uh, it was the most I've ever written down in a game I've written since I've been here. <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, it sounded like say, it was a cruise for I West Ham say, for the first, Yeah, you know. I, I mean, having said that, the first 15 minutes, when Burnley were the better team, uh, without any shadow of doubt. Clark Carlisle had a header uh, cleared off the line in the first half. It wasn't until Collison put a 1-0 up on 18 minutes that West Ham actually came to life. Um, and if you'd even said to me at that point, West Ham will go in 3 0 up at half time, I would have said, nah, not a chance. But uh, Burnley's defending kind of crumbled a little bit in the first half. The first goal, Scott Parker was brilliant. He got fouled just a few yards inside Burnley's half. Well, he's gone down, he's picked the ball up quick as he can, he's placed it and he's looked up. And Collison's made a lovely run in behind Jordan, he's chipped it over the top. Burnley has completely switched off. Scott Parker was alive, Collison was alive, good finish. Uh, Stanislas got the second one again. Lovely little re reverse pass from Franco, who may maybe looked like he might have used a, a hand in the build-up. His kind of shoulder, uh, it, was, it was marginal. Uh, mm. the, the away team would probably have got pulled up. It was one of them. Um, but again, uh, a decent finish in the end. Uh, and then the penalty just before half-time looked like it had mm. killed the game off completely. Um, Cole took it and then went off injured at half-time. Which is a bit worrying for West Ham, isn't well, it? If it's anything more than a niggle. Uh, I'd say, looking at the looking at the injury, it wasn't like a twist of the knee. It was it was like a knee to knee collision with Brian Jensen. And I mean, if you're going to collide with anyone, you probably wouldn't <coughs> pick Brian Jensen because he's a bit of a unit. Um, but I think it would probably be bruising, hmm. uh, which isn't which isn't so serious. You feel that Zola probably thought that the match is won. Absolutely. And then uh, um, just after half time, Franco got the fourth, uh, mm. and then he would have thought he's cruising because he actually took Franco off then. Um, he brought on Jimenez who came on won a penalty scored that and it was 5-0 and it was a cruise and you just you, I, I was literally sitting back in my chair now going oh, that's fine game over mm. and then all of a sudden West Ham can't defend too well can't keep clean sheets too often this season uh, and you could see why Eagles started getting some joy down the left hand side two crosses very similar goals for Fletcher to tap in and, uh, and at 5-2 you thought if they get another because there was still a fair amount to go when it got to 5-2 had they got a third one, you would have seen some nerves trembling, I'm telling you. Uh, but then Caldwell got sent off late on. Uh, I don't think he can have any complaints. Letter of the law said he had to go. I mean, the fact it was in the 90th minute and that, and that the score was 5-2 at the time. In the olden days, you would have probably had a referee go, yeah, give you a yellow card, it, the game's over, nothing silly. But that doesn't happen these days. But I've got to tell you, David Nugent came on, Jeff, at 4-0. And he had two guilt edge chances in the space <coughs> of about a minute and a half to make it 4-2 and when you saw what, what happened after that uh, that would have been very very interesting mm. uh, Eagles got his reward again uh, right at the end to make it 5-3 um, he also hit the post with you know I mean West Ham hit the, hit the crossbar as well Franco hit the bar and there were other uh, penalty just, appeals weren't uh, there? there were other penalty appeals it was just a, a it was just such an incident packed game I could sit here till 6 o'clock on my own and talk about it it was unreal I mean it's fantastic that uh, West Ham's perspective for their fans that they picked up the three points but they've got Manchester United to come at home yeah. and then two away games to follow. And they can't afford mm. to defend like this, can they? No, if they, if they defend like that, then they'll get ripped apart by the better teams. You know, Burnley have gone there and scored three. Uh, so you, you'd have to think that the big boys will go there and, and really fancy their chances. Uh, Zola couldn't have been happy with the defending mm. at 5 0 up. Mm. As for Burnley, um, still just the one point away from home. You yeah. know, despite the three goals at the end, they are conceding yeah. bucketfuls. Bucket aren't they? Absolutely. Amounts, yeah. I mean, do they need to change the way they play away from home? Well, you say that, Jeff, but they, they set up as a four-five-one <clears> formation. You know, they only had Fletcher up front <clears> on his own, um, and they actually looked <laughs> they looked a bit more solid when when they put two up front and <clears> went four-four-two, which is silly, really. But um, I, I think. He's going to have to take a look at it. I, he, he obviously wasn't happy with uh, Stephen Jordan at, at left back. He subbed him very early on in the second half. Um, Calvinez came on, uh, so he was kind of almost made made Jordan a little bit of a scapegoat. Uh, but the centre halves were undone by some good movement uh, in in the West Ham front line, uh, and it's something that that they need to be aware of.